Hi, my name is Nuno Fonseca and welcome to one more video regarding all you need to know about 3D audio. In this video we're going to talk about ambisonics. We have already talked about channel-based audio and object-based audio. Now let's talk about ambisonics. But before going to ambisonics, let's talk about a faraway cousin, the middle side. So middle side or mid side, it's a stereo recording technique widely used by a lot of professionals in this area and pretty much consists on having a cardioid microphone pointing to the front that captures pretty much the main action happening that you want to record and then you use a figure of eight pointing to the sides and by pointing the figure of eight to the sides actually that microphone will capture anything but not what comes from the front so pretty much you have a microphone covering the front and they have a microphone covering the sides. And essentially this mid side, the, the cardioid facing every, the, the front, pretty much it's like the mono component that you want to capture. So something that is on the middle, everything is being captured by this microphone. And then the other pretty much covers everything that is not in the middle. So it's almost like the non mono component of the signal. And then uh, what you do is of course, you have two audio signals. If you record them directly, you're going to have the cardioid and the figure of eight. Yes, it's audio, you can play back on speakers, but they will not give you a sound image. It's not going to perceive the sound as coming on the right spots where they should be coming from. So pretty much what you need to do is you need to decode them to stereo, which means that you're going to mix mid and side together and you get the left, and then you're going to mix mid with the uh, the inverse polarity of the side and this give you right because the figure of eight depending on the position of the sound if it's on the front is going to have a, a positive uh, uh, phase and then if moves to the back it's going to invert the polarity of, of the signal so you take advantage of this to get left and right what happened is that a lot of people use this as a matrix technique, which means that you can, the same way that you can convert mid side to left to right, you can convert left to right to mid side. So a lot of professionals use stereo and convert this to mid side to do some things and then convert back to stereo. For instance, imagine uh, uh, mastering engineers that receive the final mix in stereo. They no longer have access to the individual tracks, but they want, for instance, to equalize something on the main voice. Of course, they only have the left and right, which means that they can apply the equalizer to both signals, which means that that equalization is going to affect everything. But one trick that sometimes these mastering engineers do is convert this into mid-side, which means that you have the signal with the mono, pretty much what is on the center, and then you have another signal that is the side that pretty much everything that is not at the center and then they equalize only the mid and then convert back to stereo which means that now you are able to equalize only the sounds that are on the middle instead of equalizing everything so you can convert from left to right to mid side and vice versa and if you like math this is pretty much the uh, what is done uh, uh, in the behind so let's talk about ambisonics ambisonics was created on the 70s so 30, 50 years now um, and the idea was to create a format that would allow uh, the recording to be independent of the playback in terms of the layout the idea was okay let's record something that then would be able to playback in stereo in 5.1 in eight equal speakers in a cube with eight speakers for instance or any other things so in terms of channeled emisonics the the most famous format in terms of ambisonics is the first order ambisonics that has four channels. So pretty much the first channel, it's an omni. Imagine that you are recording something, you place an omni microphone that captures everything coming from all uh, directions exactly the same, okay? So that first channel is like the full mono of your scene. It's capturing everything that is happening in a single channel. And then you use three additional channels that is pretty much the same as having three figure of eight, one pointing left, right, another pointing front, back, another pointing up, down. And by having the mono with everything and then having three figure of eight that pretty much uh, distinguish between left and right, between front and back and between up and down, 
you then get these four channels that then you can decode and get a 3D scene that you have recorded. So pretty much you have these four channels. Each one of those channels, they are audio, pretty much like an, having an Omni and three figure of eight recording a session. Of course, it's audio. Yes, you can play back on speakers, but once again, you don't get this sound image that you are looking for. So you need to decode this for your system, for a stereo, for a 5.1, for any other format they would like to, to use. At some point, it was obvious that instead of using an Omni and three figure of eight, it were much more easier to do the same thing, but with four capsules. So you get this tetrahedral microphones, as you see on the picture, pretty much with four capsules uh, pointing like this. So pretty much you have a capsule that is the left front up, then you have another right front down, then you have the left back down and you get right back up. So these four capsules that then you can convert into uh, the traditional Omni and three figure of eight. One thing that you need to be very careful is that when someone sends you a recording and say, okay, this is a recording in Ambisonics that I've done, you need to be very careful because that recording could be what is called the A format, which means that it's pretty much the recording of each one of these four capsules of the tetrahedral microphone, okay? And that's A format, or if your colleague already converted that to the traditional Amisonics that is usually called B format with that Omni and three figure of eight. So be careful when someone sends you something in Amisonics, you need to be completely sure that is either A format, which means the recording of the four capsules, okay? Or if it's already B format, which means Omni and three figure of eight. Nonetheless, with using four capsules, you are able to uh, convert the four capsules. For instance, if you mix the four capsules, you get this Omni component. If you mix the front capsules with the invert, inverse polarity of the back capsules, you get the figure of eight as being up down, front back, and all other things that you can do to convert this. So, Amisonics, and okay, the question is, can we generate a 3D space using these four audio channels with accuracy? Well, not really. The bad news is that although Amisonics it's, has the ability to differentiate between left uh, and right, front and back, up and down, actually the, the space resolution, it's not very good, okay? You eventually have a sound coming from there, but a re Amisonics recording will not play back as a sound coming from there. It's going to play back as a sound coming from there. Much more diffuse. Yes, once again, you are able to distinguish bef between a sound playing over there or playing over there or over there. But if you have, for instance, two sounds close to each other, it's going to be very blurry in terms of sound image. And that's why there is something called I order Ambisonics. Well, what is I order Ambisonics? Essentially, it's a version of Ambisonics that allows you to use much more channels, but give you much more precision in terms of space. So, in terms of I order Ambisonics, for instance, if you are using first order Ambisonics, you are using these four channels, like this Omni, like I mentioned, you get this Omni, you get this three figure of eight, four channels, and you get first order Ambisonics. If you want much more space resolution, okay, if you want much more details in terms of the location of sounds, then you can use what is called second order ambisonics. And second order pretty much add these additional five channels with these strange polar patterns, okay? And by giving this, now you are using nine channels to be able to get much more space resolution. If you want even more, you can go for third order ambisonics. And now you're adding seven additional channels, a total of 16 channels and give you even more detail and you can move on if, and then you get even more and more detail in terms of ambisonics. So first order ambisonics, it's great in terms, especially for ambiences, like you want to re do a recording in Times Square in the middle of the woods or in the middle of the city. Okay, it's great but each sound, it's not going to be very precise in terms of position, it's going to be slightly diffuse. So if you want a more uh, uh, precise kind of sound, you need 
to have additional, you need to use iHeart and Bisonics, more audio channels that give you much more resolution. Of course, as you can imagine, there is no microphones with these crazy patterns. Yes, there is this Omnis in figure of eights, but nothing else. But what you need to do is having special microphones like these ones in the picture. For instance, in here, this is a microphone phone called EigenMic that has 32 capsules. That is now a model with 64 that gives you pretty much six other ambisonics. But with this kind of microphones, then now you get much more detail and much more uh, space resolution. One thing that you need to be very careful is there are multiple flavors of ambisonics. Once again, we're talking about a technology that is now 50 years, okay? During, there was a lot of evolution. Initially, it was only the first order, then we start having high order ambisonics. So a lot of things have changed. So you need to be very careful when someone sends you or when you send something in ambisonics to someone. The first thing is, okay, which order are we talking about? Is first order ambisonics, second order, third order, fourth, and so on? Okay, the good news is that by simply looking at the number of channels, you automatically know the order. Okay, if it is four channels, it's first order. If it's nine, it's second order, and so on. So the good news is by simply looking at the number of channels, you know which flavor are you talking about. The second is in terms of format, okay? It's, is it A format or is it B format? Is the A format, once again, the direct recording of these four capsules of the tetrahedral microphone or is B format and it was already converted to B format, you know, the Omni and three figure of eight. And usually B format is the way that uh, most Ambisonics plugins work there where are already expecting to receive this in B format. So pretty much when you when you have a recording, try to convert that to, to B format because most of the remaining plugins that you want to use with Ambisonics, they were they are expecting uh, uh, B format. Nonetheless, be careful that is A format and B format both with four channels for first order and Amazonics, and you need to be very careful to know if it is B or A format. Second, there was this problem called the ordering of channels, because originally, yes, the first channel is the Omni, okay, but the, the second one changed the position through time. So at some point, there was uh, some, uh, one of those front, back, left, right, it was the first, then it changed. So. The good news is that if you are pretty much using Amisonics with a recent, uh, over the last 10 years or so, kind of uh, Amisonics solution, okay, pretty much it's called ACN, the ordering. Nonetheless, if you are using a recording that was done like 40 years ago or some other technology that is already very old, be careful because eventually it could be still using the FUMA channel ordering, okay, which means that now the, the sounds will not be on the right places. The good news is that if you start playing an Amisonics file and you start listening to things on the wrong positions, things that should be come from the left comes from above or vice versa, or the front or something like that, pretty much it's the channel ordering that is not the, the correct one. You need to invert and uh, change the order of the channels inside the, the streaming. Finally, on top of that, there is something called normalization. And essentially, it's about the gains of each one of those channels, especially with the, the, the creation of I ordered Ambisonics. There was some change that need to be done to allow the Ambisonics to grow to form more channels. And something that originally it was used in FUMA, at some point starts to be used in something called N3D, and nowadays pretty much everyone uses SCN3D because the advantage is that the first channel is always the strongest in terms of uh, level, which means that if the first channel is not clipping, oh, you don't need to worry about all the remaining ones. Nonetheless, you, you need to be careful if you are using the right flavor of ambisonics. Sometimes people refer to these flavors and oh, I am using Ambix format. Well, when they talk about Ambix, pretty much what they are saying is that they are using B format, ACN, SCN 3D. So if you someone tell you that they are using Ambix format, you already know it's B format, ACN, and SCN 3D. So once again, be careful regarding uh, these flavors because there are multiple flavors of Amisonics out there. And since it's audio, sometimes there isn't 
metadata or any additional information. It's some only an audio file, and pretty much people uh, don't uh, have the the time or the thought to actually annotate which format they are using about. So this is the number of channels regarding the orders. Once again, four channels, first order, nine channels, second order, and so on. One interesting thing about ambisonics is that from an engineering point of view, it's very, very easy to rotate the sound field in ambisonics. So you have ambisonics that represents this sound, 3D sound field, and if I want to rotate, it doesn't matter which kind of rotation I'm talking about, if it is yaw or pitch or roll, okay, all of these rotations, you can easily do this from uh, engineering point of view to ambisonics because all, it's only a matter of applying a, a matrix. Of course, this was particularly interesting for VR applications because when you are in VR and you start moving your head around, pretty much what you're doing is rotating uh, the, the camera, the position of the camera, which means that, of course, you need to rotate the sound because if you look rotate your head to the side, now you need to rotate all the sound field accordingly to the position of the head. And then Amisonics, it's perfect for VR because it gives you 3D sound, okay? Allows you to get 3D sound with a small number of audio, starting with four channels, okay? And it's very easy to do rotation. And that's one of the main reasons why Amisonics, that during a lot of years, it was pretty much only used on academic um, institutions, now started to grow again in popularity, mainly because of this application in VR applications and 360 videos. One thing that is important for you to remember regarding ambisonics is that the same way that we have learned a lot about stereo, okay, you need to be careful not to do the same mistakes again. What I want to say is that, okay, an ambisonics microphone, you know, the tetrahedral with four capsules, gives you much more space for information than a mono or a stereo, okay? And people say, okay, great. So let's start using ambisonics for microphones for everything. And they sometimes start to fall in, in love with the idea of ambisonics microphone. So they actually start to think that it's the, the tool for everything, okay? Nonetheless, be careful because ambisonics microphones will not fix your problems. The same way that if you are doing a movie in stereo, it's not only a matter of placing a stereo microphone on top of the camera and hoping for everything to be fixed. The same thing happens here. Sometimes you want, it's not to place an ambisonics, what you want is to simply have a clip microphone or a boom operator and then on post-production panning according to that or do some additional uh, post-production and sound design and some other things. So be careful because sometimes people that it's okay, I'm doing a 360 movie, it's only a matter of placing uh, a Masonics microphone there and then hoping that there is no need for post-production whatsoever. No, you still need post-production and do a lot of things. Second, Amisonics uses a coincident kind of approach. So pretty much all the capsules capture the, the sound pretty much from the same point of view. If you go look and see how the big recording engineers, you know, the ones that receive Grammys, re recording orchestras and things like that, most of them will not simply use a stereo pair to record an orchestra. They use several microphones in different positions to capture a more decorrelated sound with making sure that the sound of each channel is completely different from the sound of other channels. And this gives you a new dimension with this time and this time variation, this decorrelated kind of sound. With Amisonic, since it is a coincident microphone, yes, it gives you a sense of 3D, but it not give you the perfect 3D representation or you probably, especially in music, you will get much better results with other approaches that not actually using only an ambisonic. So yes, ambisonics microphones are better than stereo and mono in terms of uh, space information, but don't fall in love with the idea that it's now the only microphone you're going to use for the rest of your life. So what are the pr pros? Well, it works with any layout. You record something in ambisonics and great, you are able to decode this to every single layout without any kind of problems, okay? Yes, allows you to use 3D sound with a small number of channels, starting with four, okay? And this is good advantage for ambisonics. In terms of cons, the disadvantage is that you actually need much more channels if you want good space resolution. If you want 
3D but with much more uh, detail in terms of space, four channels are not enough. The first order ambisonics, it's not enough. You need much more high order ambisonics to get this wonderful result. So that's the wrap up for this clip. We talk about ambisonics. On the next clip, we're going to talk about binaural, which means 3D sound over headphones. So stay tuned. Once again, remember to see or read our free ebook. All you need to know about 3D audio freely available in the RSN website. Stay tuned.